o'clock in the morning, bells were rung. They went to bed at night, bells were rung. They couldn't see, they had to put on a silence mask. They couldn't recognise another prisoner, nor could they be recognised. Most Melbournians nowadays would be familiar with the cold and uneasy presence of the old Melbourne jail. Its foreboding facade, however, serves as the backdrop for something much more macabre. <laughs> It was a dirty place. People got sick, mentally and physically. And um, I think a lot of people did go absolutely mad in here. My name's Trish Rothfield, and I'm uh, a tour guide, and I'm also um, a volunteer coordinator here at the Old Melbourne Jail. A collection of documents was unearthed in early 2005, written with surgical precision of when and how prisoners were punished and executed. Yes, I have heard of it, and I have seen the book. Our primary sources really are the Public Records Office and then following that are the newspapers at the time. One of the governors of the jail, um, John Castillo, he used the phrase in the virtually the opening paragraph as, the old Melbourne jail was a place full of lunatics and paupers. And there were, and I mean, you know, the, the, the folklore goes, oh, you steal a loaf of bread and you end up in, in prison or being transported. It's not far off the truth. The worst conditions occurred between 1880 and 1894, beginning with the death of Ned Kelly and ending with the execution of Fred Deeming. Deeming himself was said to be a prime suspect in the Jack the Ripper murders. Well, 133 criminals were hanged here at the Old Melbourne Jail, um, and uh, some of the stories uh, that you will see downstairs in the Death Mask Gallery, well, of course, there's Ned Kelly and Frederick Bailey Deeming. Um, the stories, though, of, I guess, the first hangings done here at the Old Melbourne Jail, they were actually public hangings out on the street, and they were two um, Indigenous people, and it's um, a sad story. They, their names were Bob and Jack, and they'd been brought up from um, one of the rural areas of Victoria to Melbourne for a public hanging. Over a third of the hangings in the Old Melbourne Jail did not go as planned. According to the journal, occasionally the neck would tear and the head would actually come away from the body. Out of four women hanged here, we've got three death masks, uh, and two women in cell 30 and 31 couldn't tell more opposite stories. Um, Martha Needle, vicious lady who poisoned most of her family, of course she was going to hang. But um, Martha, um, Emma Williams, uh, a young woman, 26, killed her baby. If you look into her backstory, she was probably postnatal depression. She'd lost her husband. He died of uh, the typhoid epidemic sweeping through Melbourne, and uh, faced with no option, no childcare, no assistance, no uh, support, um, and she hanged because she committed the worst crime. Baby. From its inception, it was overflowing with prisoners. Conditions were appalling, and it is written that up to ten people were jammed into one cell. It's it's something that was used as part of the system here. Um, sinister, uh, pretty evil-looking thing, really. Um, a lot of people, you know, uh, remember back to that era in the 1850s, 60s, and um, you see history books and that of people demeaned, really, wearing. So locked in silence in a cell was one level. Locked in silence with a silence mask as you left your cell was the next level. So they controlled you, manipulated you, and kept you silent. It was a very difficult jail to get out of. Um, the walls, double thick blue stone, barred windows. Um, going out of a window and maybe dropping down many, many feet with shredded blankets was a common way. But they'd get out of the window, go down the wall, and what would they have to do? Maybe get over one wall, or maybe two walls um, to get outside over the big wall. So you had to be smart, and some of the cleverest escape attempts were where people, bold as brass, just did things that got them out the door or uh, 
one couple of guys actually crawled down the sewer line and came out in the manhole on the other side of the wall. You've got to understand the conditions in this place were pretty horrendous. Inmates were locked up for 23 hours a day and only allowed one meal. So you can see how their only alternative was to risk their lives by jumping out of a window for their own freedom. This system was um, a system where it was copied from a jail in London called Pentonville Jail. It was supposed to be a new idea of locking people away in silence and separation. The onerous system itself kept order, and it kept order, a lot of it relating to fear. If, for instance, you crossed the line and were a violent prisoner, or you were continually breaking the laws of the jail, you'd be whipped uh, if you're a man, and you'd be sent to the punishment cells for 48 hours for the women. This is an example of one of the whips that would have been used in the old Melbourne jail. The tip would have been dipped in wax for added effect, similar to a metal bar. For minor indiscretions, a dozen lashings would have been doled out, but for major ones, 12 dozen. So the fear of those um, extra punishments, as well as just languishing in solitary confinement until you started to shape up and behave, that was probably the fear of all of that that drove people to uh, keep the rules of the jail. With all these sinister accounts from the journal aside, it is more frightening to imagine the impact on the individual and how they became victims, whether innocent or not, to unquestionable despotism. Because in these desperate times, desperate measures were taken. The history of, of hangings, everyone um, has an individual story, and um, at that time, uh, that was the punishment for the crime.